What is going on guys, Kaiserger here, and today I'm bringing you another free-to-play slash low-budget player-friendly build for Genshin Impact, and today we're going to be talking about Chong Yun, the Ice King himself, the Yin to Deluxe Yang, but before we get right into it, there's one thing I got to make clear. Look, guys, Chong Yun, he's not the best DPS in this game, right? Surprise, surprise, I know, right? He's not a Deluxe, he's not a Kirching. And he's even not a razor, right? But what Chong Yun excels at, right? What he is amazing at is crowd control, support, but not support as in that's his role, but support through his composition, through being a main carry, he offers support and utility, right? Even to the other team. He is a team player, essentially. He's not super selfish like the other characters, he's a team player even as a main carry. And that's what he offers. And as you're gonna see later in some gameplay, he could pretty much continuously freeze enemies right that's the whole point of this build freeze and shatter and he's going to keep enemies frozen like 99 percent of the time pretty much right so just, let's just get right into the build and show you all the good stuff so first we'll be talking about our party composition now this is a bit unique as you might have already seen we got both sing cho and Barbara on the same team. Now, normally, right, normally I would advise against this. Normally I'd be like, no, both of them fill the same role. They're both Hydra supports, right? They're both Hydra supports, right? They both heal and apply wet. That's that's their purposes, right? Normally, normally you'd only want one or the other. Barbara for more heals, Sing Cho for more DPS. But in this team, since the whole focus is to freeze and shatter enemies, you want both of them. The reason for that is because you're going to keep your enemies wet more times, and that means you're going to be being able to freeze them more often than not. So this gives you an edge in keeping your enemies frozen. And really, there's not many other characters you'd want in this spot anyway, so may as well run both of these characters. They're phenomenal in this specific team composition. Normally, again, I would advise against this, but in this composition, Yes. Now, another interesting choice here. We have Kaya, one of the most underappreciated and undervalued characters in the game. A lot of people consider him the worst alongside Amber, right? But he serves a purpose here. Alongside Chong Yun, an ice character, not only do we get the elemental resonance of double cryo, right? But we're going to be able to apply cryo more often, right? Get that synergy up, get that boost up, going to be able to apply it more often, and therefore keep enemies frozen more often. That, again, is the point of this build. Freeze enemies, shatter them. And Chong Yun is going to be the one to shatter him with his big claymore, right? He's going to be shattering them, doing extra damage, and then freezing them right back again <laughs> with his abilities right so that's the reason and also i know you can see here kaya is level six that doesn't matter too much because he is he's not it's the fur the focus for him is not to do damage but to support by applying additional cryo effects so it's not don't have to worry about his level basically is what i'm trying to say although if you boost him of course it wouldn't hurt at all if you have the resources to do so now let us talk about the man himself Again, Ice King is what I like to call him. So, now we got the team composition out of the way. Let's talk attributes. You definitely, definitely want to focus on attack. Just like pretty much any main carry in the game, attack is crucial. It is key. Let's look at some of these details real quick. You can see some of this. Crit rate, I know the crit rate's really low. We gotta, gotta boost that a little bit higher, ideally, ideally, ideally. But, this is not a perfect world, and I have a lot of characters to make builds for, so sometimes we gotta make do of what we got. Next up, we got our weapons. And as you can see here, just like Diluc, we're running the prototype Eminus. And I don't think there is honestly a better choice for this character, besides, of course, you know, the Wolf's Greystone. If if you have that five-star weapon, then yeah, go go with that, right? That's that's pretty obvious, kind of Captain Obvious. But if you're a free-to-play player, prototype Eminus is great. You could craft this, you get the weapon from the you know, the Wolf of the North Lair or Storm Terror. Those could drop the Claymore part you used to craft this so definitely craft this and refine it if you can but we do have other options here all right so normally this this is a great choice the rain slasher it increases damage against enemies affected by hydro or electro by 20 percent now of course our enemies are pretty much going to always be affected by hydro when we apply wet so back and forth it's it's not ideal because they are going to be frozen after so that's the frozen effect instead so you could you could argue how effective rain slasher actually is in, in practice in theory though it's great right in practice i'm not so sure how that works out but you could use that if you choose and also 
a great option is the debate club. It's a three-star weapon, but it has the blunt conclusion. After using an elemental skill, normal or charged attacks on hit deal an additional 60% attack damage in a small area. Effects last 15 seconds to make sure. So this is a great option. It boosts up depending on how much you refine it. So definitely try to refine that if you can. But we are using the prototype Aminus here. It is great. It has the crush ability on hit. Normal or charged attacks have a 50% chance to deal an additional 240% attack damage or higher if you boost it to enemies within a small AoE can only occur once every 15 seconds. This is phenomenal. It could get you some crazy just spurts of just high damage numbers, and this is really what you want for a main carry DPS. It's great, great damage. So this or the Divide Club are both great choices, and the Rain Slasher, if you want to try that out, is also an option. Now for artifacts. I am currently running the Gladiators Finale, but but don't you worry, if you don't have this yet, there are other options that work just fine. Now, the most notable option, I would say, is to run a two-piece attack set, yeah, like the Sojourner, right? The Sojourner set gives you an initial 18% attack, just like the two-piece of the Gladiators, and then run that alongside Berserkers. A two-piece Berserkers gives you additional crit rate, so you have higher crit rate, which this character does pretty, he does need that crit rate, right? So extra crit rate plus extra attack, that is a great option. So you could run Sojourners plus your Berserkers or any other 18% you know attack boost set for the two piece. But if you have it, Gladiator's Nostalgia is amazing for DPS. It is definitely definitely a great option for him and probably one of the best options even late into the game. Of course, you're going to want to focus on attack on all of the pieces. And then here we have for the Goblet, right? This is important. Goblet definitely as soon as possible try to get a cryo damage bonus goblet this is going to help you so much because pretty much all of his damage all the damage you're gonna be doing is cryo and you'll see why later but you know when you apply wet to the enemies you use his ability it freezes them it converts all of your damage into cryo damage your every attack you do with all of your characters is going to be converted into cryo damage so this this is very important try to get cryo damage if you can it will help much more than having another attack here here, you could go for attack, you could go for crit rate, you could go for crit damage. Ideally, I would probably go for crit rate here to boost that a little bit, but I just got this crit damage, so that's also not bad. And again, attack is also a great option. It depends on what you need, really, what your stats dictate, and also RNG, of course. And for substats, you're going to want to focus on the classic, the classic, classic attack, you know, crit rate crit damage and then elemental mastery and recharge time is not bad for this either because of you're go basically going for the freeze effect so those are all great options but again attack crit rate crit you know damage and then elemental mastery so those those are the main ones hp and defense don't bother those i mean of course you're probably going to end up with some of that because rng is annoying but you know just got to work with what you got right let us talk about our constellations now the first and most important constellation for this character is ice unleashed the last attack of chong yun's normal attack combo releases three ice blades each blade deals 50 percent of chong yun's attack as cryo damage to all enemies in his path this is pretty phenomenal pretty pretty nice i have to say it's it's a great ability right you release the ice blades they deal extra damage it's it's a good time next up we got atmospheric revolution Elemental skills and elemental burst cast within the frost field created by Spirit Blade, Chong Yun's layered frost, or Chong Hua's layered frost, had their CD time reduced by 15%. Also, pretty great. As yes, we got Cloud Burst, increases the level of Spirit Blade, Cloud Parting Sword by 3. So that's, you know, generic but good. We got Frozen Skies. Chong Yun regenerates one energy every time he hits an enemy affected by Cryo. This effect occurs once every two seconds. This is also pretty good. True Path increases the level of Spirit Blade. Chong Yun's layered frost by three. Generic. And then Rally of Four Blades. It deals the Cloud Parting Star deals 15% more damage to enemies with a lower percentage of their max HP remaining than Chong Yun. This skill also summons one additional Spirit Blade. So this is also a pretty good ability. So I'd say definitely the first. And the last abilities are probably the best and most important for Chongyun. If you can, of course, ideally you'd have all constellations, but as a free-to-play, it's pretty hard. I mean, if you can, try to get the first one at least, it's pretty good. But he's still pretty, pretty decent without any constellations, so don't worry too much if you don't have any at all.
Next up, we got talents. Really, probably going to boost up his first talent as much as you can because you're going to be doing lots of normal attacks. And then you're going to want to focus on his next attack for that constant, constant frozen effect. And of course, really, I mean, of course, you know, focus on all three, right? If you have the resources, boost up all three. But I think the order is first, second, third, just like that. So ultimately it's up to your discretion and how you play specifically you know your play style but that's my opinion on the matter okay guys now i'm going to show you a little bit of a gameplay that that juicy boss ruin guard that gets frozen you're about to see that so yeah just enjoy <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to smash that like button. Subscribe for more Genshin Impact combat, con, combat, blah, content. And yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching. Kazurker out. Peace and booyah.